All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be breaking down the Knicks 122 to 109 victory over the Milwaukee Bucks. We're also going to get into the potential playoff rotation. Right now, I confidently feel confident, if that makes any sense, in eight of our players. We'll go over it, and we're going to talk about Jalen Brunson and how he should be in the MVP conversation. Let's start off with Brunson because this is something that isn't getting talked about, and it's strange because the Knicks obviously are one of the biggest markets in the entire country. I mean, outside of the Lakers, I'd say we're right up there with them. Before the media, they just don't talk about Jalen Brunson enough. We all know he's an all NBA level player. We all know he's an all-star and then some. He's one of the best players, honestly, to ever play for this franchise. But what about him being the second player in NBA history to average at least 28 points per game, six assists, 39% from three, and a plus 400 plus and minus or better? The only other player to do that besides Brunson this year is Steph Curry in 2015 and 16. And for those of you that, of course, don't remember, Steph was the unanimous MVP that season. So Brunson is having one of the most crazy seasons, yet he isn't even in the top 10 in terms of MVP discussion. Also, another thing for Brunson is that he leads the league in plus minus at a plus 436. He's averaging 31 a game on 48.1% from the field. He's also giving the Knicks 3.4 rebounds, 7.4 assists, and defensively, he's in the top five in terms of charges drawn. Brunson is playing high-level defense. Of course, he does have to facilitate. He's got to run the offense. He's got to score. But for him to give us above-average defense is all we need because the Knicks have defenders around him. Of course, they got Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi, Mitchell Robinson seems to be getting more healthy. The Knicks, the thing with them is that the OG trade is truly what changed this franchise because when he's been on the court healthy, it seems like the Knicks just don't lose. And I get that they lost to the Bulls a couple of the nights ago on Friday, but it's, it's their third loss with OG in the lineup. And also that was his return. OG, his defense puts the Knicks over the top. The Knicks, of course, in the, the full month that they had with OG back in January, they were the best defensive team in the NBA. And OG, he's still going to have to get a shot back, of course, because he's coming back from an injury. I mean, he was just 2 of 10 against the Bucks. But once he's able to give the Knicks shot creation to go with that defense, I mean, four steals against the Bucks, two blocks. I mean, he truly is the biggest difference maker for this team. And another difference maker is Dante DiVincenzo. He's having a career season. He scored 26 points last night, 8 of 14 from the field, 8 of 11 from three is just unreal three assists four rebounds a steal and a block plus 15. dante of course came over in free agency he signed a big contract with the knicks and ever since he was inserted into the starting lineup he's been giving us 15 a night also high level defense of course he can put up a three from just about anywhere on the court he's got the green light and the thing for dante is since january he actually leads the nba in made threes he has more made threes than steph and clay and Luca, and he's doing it, of course, on high level efficiency. Right now, Dante is shooting 40.5% from three, and he gets up a lot of shots. So that's on high volume, which makes it even more impressive. Josh Hart last night played 37 minutes, was two of nine from the field, but he had nine rebounds, nine assists. It seemed kind of like a quiet game for Hart, but to this point, we expect him to rebound, assist, and of course, defensively, just keep up the intensity. I like what I saw out of Hart. Brunson was definitely the MVP of the game. He was the best player on the court, which is crazy because Giannis was also on the court. But 43 for Brunson, 8 assists, 6 rebounds, efficiency 16 of 32, that's 50%. 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Whenever Brunson is getting calls and getting to the line, he's just one of the top 10 players, in my opinion, in the NBA. And then Hartenstein honestly had a very, very sneaky good game. 18 and 10. I mean, the Knicks do not win this game without Hartenstein. He was so good with that floater, and he just was always in the right spot, set good screens. In terms of the bench, there's only three players on the bench that I trust. That would be Bogdanovich, Robinson, and McBride. We were talking about who goes to the bench when OG was inserted into the starting lineup, and a lot of you guys did say McBride. I think like 90% of you guys said McBride. For me, it was it probably does make sense to go with Brunson, Hart, Devo, and OG, and that's what exactly what Coach Tib decided to do. So McBride, he plays 18 minutes off the bench, scores eight points, has three steals, two boards, and an assist. Having McBride at the end of our bench in the playoffs is going to be absolutely a game changer. Mitchell Robinson had six boards and three blocks. Is Mitchell Robinson back? I don't think so. He's not far from it, obviously, but those three blocks is definitely a sign of encouragement. 
For the Knicks to win a championship, Robinson's going to be extremely important. He's going to be crucial to this team in terms of getting boards, second chances, and of course blocking shots. But the biggest thing is those second chance points because the Knicks, we know they like to attack the basket. And when they miss, if Robinson's able to clean it up, kick it out to a shooter, I mean, Dante G. Vincenzo specifically, or OG, or Brunson, I mean, just, just giving us more chances is going to be big because the Knicks, we know they can score. But these are going to be tight games and every possession, every basket is going to matter. So definitely excited about Mitch and what he's going to do, of course, the rest of the season. And then Bogdanovich played 17 minutes, had 15 points and assists and a board. Bogdanovich is a crucial piece to this team because of his shot creation ability, especially if there's some possessions where the Knicks just can't score. They can't buy a bucket. They're getting stops. Having a guy like Bogdanovich that can heat up and win you a playoff game is going to be big because if he scores 20 points on high level efficiency off of the bench in a playoff game, that could be the difference between the Knicks winning and losing that game. And in terms of pressures of Chua, I don't think he's going to be a piece of our playoff rotation just because he's been a little bit streaky. Precious has looked amazing at times and he's just looked flat out bad. And you don't really want to risk that in the playoffs. I could see him getting a run against potentially a small ball lineup, but we'll have to wait and see on that. But I do think the Knicks rotation will be eight deep. And I would love to tell you guys it's going to be 10 11, but it's just not going to happen. So you kind of have to work with what you got. And of course, the Knicks are putting their best eight players out there, giving themselves the best chance. Fatigue will be one thing, but they're going to have the entire offseason to rest, which is why I don't want Brunson to play for Team USA just so he can get more rest. But. I mean, he's definitely going to, and he did last year. But, I mean, it's his decision, obviously. But um, outside of that, the Knicks right now, we're the number four seed. We're, what? We're actually tied with the Magic for the three seed, but they have the tiebreaker because they beat us three out of four. The Bucks are just a game ahead of us. They've lost four in a row, and obviously no one's catching the Celtics. I mean, they have, you know, what, 15 more wins than anyone else in the East, which is just crazy to think about. If the Knicks can get all the way up to the three seed, I'd be happy because they would not have to play Boston. If the Knicks get up to the two seed, then that would be even better. If the Knicks end up getting the four seed, well, yeah, they'd have to play Boston in the second round, which would suck, but at least they would have home court against the Cavs in the playoffs. Remember, the Knicks actually started on the road last year in the playoffs, so it would be kind of a switch. But I think the Knicks can beat anyone besides, well, I'm not gonna say we can't beat Boston, because obviously we can't beat Boston. I mean, if anyone has a chance against the Celtics in the East, it's, in my opinion, the Knicks, and I'm biased, but, the Bucks look trash right now with Doc Rivers. The Magic are too young. The Cavs, I mean, maybe the Cavs would have a chance, but I feel like the Knicks are better than the Cavs. I mean, the Knicks beat the Cavs this season in Cleveland with Brunson playing in just a minute, and they were banged up. Like, no Randall, obviously, things like that. What's next for the Knicks? Tuesday night against the Bulls, Thursday against the Celtics, back-to-back -back Friday against the Nets, and then Sunday is an afternoon game against the Bulls. If the Knicks can get three of their next four games and the Magic lose two of their next four games, we get the three seed. The Bucks also, we cannot rule out the two seed. You guys were telling me that in last night's video, saying that the two seed is definitely attainable. And I completely agree with you because the Bucks have been playing such low-level basketball, losing four of their last four games. So yeah, guys, Knicks Daily, smash the like button, subscribe. Peace.